Hi there, Astro Gazer. You probably clicked on this video to hear my thoughts on the harmonic drive mount from ZWO called the AM5. So let me share my first impressions of the ZWO AM5 I already got in January 2023 from the nice people over at ZWO. So why did it take me so long to produce a decent review? Well, this is why. At this point, I should make clear that I didn't receive any instructions or money to do this review. So I'm giving you my honest opinion here and yes, you just have to believe me or not. Anyhow, I did find a handful of clear nights in the hideous winter in Northwestern Europe to test the ZWO AM5. So let me tell you all about my first experiences and thoughts about the ZWO AM5, but before I do so, I also want to give you my background story as to why I became intrigued by harmonic drive mounts like the AM5 after having used some good old German equatorial mounts like the Celestral Navy X, the Skywatch Hero Q6R Pro for years. I think that's useful because many folks like me are on the fence about staying true to their gems versus joining the harmonic drive mount revolution. Two thoughts came to mind when I heard about the fact that CWO was launching its AM5 mount back in 2022. First, isn't CWO the company that helped to completely destroy the CCD camera market by introducing innovative and affordable CMOS cameras for astrophotography with high quantum efficiencies and low read noise? Well, yes. So my second thought was, if this company launches a new mount based on harmonic drive technology, will that mean the end of the German equatorial mount business, just like the good old CCD camera business? It surely must have come as a shocker for brands like Skywatcher and Celestron when ZWO announced their first harmonic drive mount. Now, ZWO is not the only company that's launching its new harmonic drive mounts. Other brands like Ioptron, Pegasus Astro, Rainbow Astro and Sharpstar are also jumping on the harmonic drive mount wagon by launching their own mounts. And intrigued as I was by this, I made an overview video on all these brand new harmonic drive mounts. You can find the link to that overview in the video description below. Now, one of the things that stood out in that overview video was that the ZWO AM5 was one of the cheapest harmonic drive mounts available on the Astro market for about $2,000. And that's important because there's a big difference when comparing the potential harmonic drive mount revolution to the CMOS Astro camera revolution back in 2015 and that is CMOS cameras were way cheaper than CCD cameras whereas harmonic drive mounts are generally more expensive than German equatorial mounts in the same category. So if you are considering swapping your good old German equatorial mount for a more expensive harmonic drive mount you want to know what the cheapest one is on the market and if that mount can actually replace your good old German equatorial mount and the AM5 is that mount. So let me tell you all about it. So another important question is, we know, why don't you show your face on this video? Well, I'm recovering from COVID-19 and I basically look like beep. So that's why I'm only doing the voiceover and hopefully I will be recovered soon and give you a decent video with me in it. So let's move on and talk about the setup and ease of use of the ZWO AM5. My AM5 mount arrived in January under cloudy skies and the only thing I could do was make a silly video about me cleaning the house for my wife and unboxing my ZWO AM5 at the same time, which some of you liked and others took way too seriously. Anyway, the mount arrived in a nice suitcase that's about 30 by 30 by 18 centimeters, or as my American friends would say, 12 by 12 by 8 inches. As I'm used to the metric system, I'll mention centimeters and kilograms from now on, and I hope that my American friends have that metric to imperial calculator ready for use. The AM5 mount is super lightweight as it only weighs 5.5 kilograms. That's about three times lighter than my good old Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount. And I was happy to see that I could take the whole AM5 mount with me on my Dutch bicycle, instead of slowly developing a chronic back pain when dragging my heavy EQ6R Pro mount to my backyard. 
What makes it really interesting is that the AM5 is designed to carry a payload up to 13 kilograms without using any counterweight and up to 20 kilograms with a counterweight attached. That's beyond the maximum payload capacity of most beginner level astrophotography mounts like the popular Celestron AVX or the Skywatcher Hack 5 Pro and about equal to the popular Skywatcher EQ6R Pro which can carry up to 20 kilograms. Now, these are all figures on a piece of paper that doesn't tell me much. So I tested my AM5 using two uh, setups. My 500mm apochromatic refractor telescope with a camera, filter wheel and guide camera attached and my Celestron Edge HD 8 inch with the same extras and a 0.7 reducer without using a counterweight. I know most of you are very interested in the PHD2 guiding figures I got using both telescopes across the few clear nights we had in Europe. And I'm pretty sure I can show you these figures right away when you smash those like, share and subscribe buttons. Ha! <laughs> yes, here they are. Using both setups, my tracking was well below one arc second per pixel as promised by ZWO. The RA and DEC were around 0.5 to 0.7 using PHD2 and multi-star guiding at a one second interval. So I got my round stars even when imaging at about 1500 millimeters focal length, which is pretty freaking awesome. Let's take a step back and talk about the optional TC40 carbon fiber tripod that comes with the AM5 for an extra $350. That tripod only weighs about 2.3 kilograms. The tripod is 50 centimeters long when it's folded and it can be extended to about 80 centimeters. The maximum extension is still quite close to the ground as compared to some of the tripods that come with classic German equatorial mounts like the EQ6R Pro. At the same time, I felt like the reduced length of the legs offered more stability to the rig. TWO does offer an optional pier if you want to extend the height of the tripod, which I didn't get. Let me just pause here and recognize that the mount and tripod combined only weigh about 8 kilograms. If you compare that to my EQ6R Pro, which does need counterweights, that setup is about four times heavier as compared to this AM5. I'm appreciating this fact more and more as I get older and more fragile. I'm 46 years old now, and this might be the mount I need to keep on doing astrophotography until I die. I'll be completely honest with you, it did feel kind of strange when putting my Celestron Edge HD telescope with all that extra stuff on that lightweight AM5 mount, but it passed the test with flying colors. Using ASCOM, the mount had no problem slewing to the areas in the night sky using plate solving software, and as mentioned, my tracking was well below one arc second per pixel. I was also happy to see that the latest DWO ASCOM driver for the AM5 worked like a charm. The driver was really easy to set up and I could use the mount in combination with all kinds of popular astrophotography software like Sequence Generator Pro, PHD2, SharpCap and Stellarium. Of course, the AM5 also works in combination with the ASI Air, but I'm kind of hooked on using different astro software for different goals and this ASCOM driver makes that possible. Setting up the mount is very easy. I was able to connect the AM5 to the TC40 by installing a head plate on the AM5 that locks the mount to the tripod. The mount is already set up to equatorial mount from 0 to 60 degrees latitude, but it can be adjusted to higher latitudes if needed. As I'm at 52 degrees latitude, I simply loosened the tension grips and used the altitude adjustment to put the mount at 52 degrees latitude and re-tighten the tension grips. Likewise, it is easy to adjust the mount in azimuth. You can simply loosen the azimuth lock and rotate the azimuth knobs to polar align the mount. I do need to mention that there isn't any poloscope that comes with the mount for polar alignment. For me personally, that's not a big issue as I'm connecting the AM5 via a USB cable to my mini PC. I then use the view of my primary camera to polar align my mount using the polar alignment assistant in SharpCap. I saw some videos of people complaining about the altitude and azimuth adjustment when doing polar alignment, but I didn't experience this to be a big issue. You do need to take care and make very small adjustments to polar align your telescope, but I definitely experienced far worse with other equatorial mounts. 
The AM5 also comes with an old-fashioned hand controller, which can be used to move the telescope around, initiate tracking, or put the mount back into the home position. This is rather basic as compared to some of the hand controllers you'll get when buying an equatorial mount, but let's be honest, most astrophotographers remotely control their mount over USB using astrophotography software like SG Pro, Nina, or they control their mount with devices like the ASI Air. The AM5 is definitely meant for people who want to automate their astrophotography in this way. What's also nice about the mount is that it is very quiet when slewing to targets. Which is very different to some of the beginner mounts like the Celestron AVX, which do sound like a coffee grinder. The mount also has a separate guide port that works fine, but I never use that guide port as I'm always connecting my guide camera directly via USB to PHD2 and I'm using the ZWO ASCOM driver to send guiding pulses from PHD2 to the ZWO AM5 mount. So isn't there anything I don't like about the mount? Well. I did accidentally kick the tripod of the telescope after one of the polar alignment procedures and the mount immediately moved because it is so lightweight. So that caused me to redo my polar alignment. But apart from this, I'm really impressed by the performance of the AM5. So how do I feel about this mount and how does it compete against other mounts? Well, I can honestly say from the bottom of my heart that I didn't have so much fun with the mount for years. I've put this lightweight mount on my rooftop using only a ladder to look at the Venus-Jupiter conjunction that was low in the western sky. And that's something I'd never do with a heavier German equatorial mount. Now the ASCOM driver also works like a charm and it enabled me to connect the mount to all the astrophotography software I really like. And the guiding results were well below one arc second using different telescopes from 500 millimeters all the way up to 1500 millimeters of focal length. Also, I found the setup and polar alignment procedure of this mount to be really easy. Price-wise, the ZWO AM5 is one of the cheaper harmonic drive mounts on the astrophotography market today. The only competition within the harmonic drive mount market seems to come from Ioptron with their HAM27 and HAA29, which I didn't test yet. Still, at about $2350 including the tripod, the price is a bit beyond the popular German equatorial mounts like the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro or the Ioptron SEM40 which can handle about the same payload. But for that extra price, you'll get an easy to use mount that is about 2 to 4 times lighter than the classic German equatorial mounts, you don't have to mess around with counterweights, you can easily take this mount with you on a holiday trip with your friends or family as it doesn't take up much space. Harmonic drive mounts like the ZWO AM5 are still pretty new, so I'm very curious to see what the long-term reliability of those mounts will be. All in all, after having tested this mount, I do think I will buy it, and I'm curious to find out if I'm going to prefer using my ZWO AM5 over my good old Skywatcher EQ6R Pro that has served me so well in the past. I'll definitely make an update video after 6 months to give you a longer term test review. And that's all I got folks, clear skies and thanks for watching.